Hey folks, welcome back. In this segment, we're going to be focusing on the roadmap, both for Nats and for uh, Synadia products. So let's start with Nats. Uh, the next upcoming release is going to be focused on a um, number of things, uh, many of which improve uh, the KV capabilities, uh, such as type semantics, uh, value type semantics, which in includes not just having the ability to set opaque bytes um, in your key value store, but being able to actually model counters, lists, sets, and maps, and having native operations to be able to um, support those those values, value types. And this this has been a common request, and pe a lot of people who have transitioned or have been wanting to transition to using Nats KV natively uh, are typically coming from Redis, which is obviously a an incredibly popular project. And even though Redis has a whole ton of different data structures and, and, and various things, uh, these are the kind of the four common ones that people actually use in practice. So um, for 2.11, we wanted to introduce a couple new value types. And these are the, the first set of, set of those beyond just the raw bytes. Another one is uh, per message TTLs. So today within a stream or a KV bucket, you can only set a single TTL value for the entire, that applies to the entire bucket. Um, so if you set five seconds or something, every key value pair will eventually time out or um, be deleted, auto-deleted uh, after five seconds. So this basically provides the ability to do on a per key, key value pair uh, basis, uh, an individual TTL. And another, Kind of side effect of that is the ability to actually re-up a TTL to actually emulate an uh, LRU cache, like a, a least recent, recently used cache, uh, without the need to actually put a new version of the of the value, um, which can save on um, bandwidth and, and, and latency in that case. Another uh, commonly requested one, and this is sort of a subtle one, but if you when you when you need it, you need it, which is a multi-key direct get from the KV bucket. So in this case, there are, of course, APIs to be able to uh, get a single value from a key um, or associated with a key, but not necessarily multiple, uh, multiple values across multiple keys. And this, this new API is going to basically allow you to do a consistent read across multiple keys um, so that you can get the values at that time. Um, at that basically at that sequence number. Um, so this is a sort of a snapshot bulk batch uh, read of keys of, effectively. And then finally, the, the big one um, beyond the other ones is actually all of the necessary components within the server to support native distributed tracing. And uh, stepping back, like, People could use, you know, the open telemetry SDKs and hooks to be able to set headers in, in Nats messages, for instance. That was always possible, and because headers are propagated across, um, obviously, when on delivery and, and things like that, um, you could, at the application level, you could uh, express your spans within a given trace. But now this is going to actually support some additional metadata that gets incorporated via the servers themselves. And there's going to be a more formal way to do uh, tracing and that it's, it's going to be uh, open telemetry co compatible ef effectively. It's going to be using the same header semantics and whatnot that uh, the open telemetry spec uh, uses. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, later this year, there's a couple that are pretty top of mind that are going to be um, worked on including this message processing callout type of capability. And this was driven really by a couple of use cases, such as advanced filtering or transformation of messages that isn't supported directly in the NAT server. So we know with filtering, uh, you can do subject level filtering. So you can do wild cards um, within a token or within a subject at a per token level, for, for instance. But if you wanted to sort of filter based on headers or, or the message body, because you know what the, the, the encoded of the message body is, um, that's not, that's not supported in the server and, and, it, and it won't be. Um, so the, the other option is to say, well, how, what if the, what if the server could, you know, send and forward the message over to a standalone service or a set of them, obviously it could be distributed as well. 
and that service knows, you know, can can look into the headers, it can look into the the message body potentially, do its thing, and then it basically decides uh, whether a delivery should happen or whether it should be filtered out, and and so on and so forth. So this is sort of a generic mechanism in order to support a handful of use cases. Another one, which is a pretty big one, um, is supporting multi-message uh, multi stream publish. So this is different from the current API that is supported today, which is more of like a asynchronous um, publish uh, model. And this is basically just de decreasing latency, waiting for all the acts to kind of come back asynchronously. Um, this is actually packaging up a set of messages and supporting a um, su supporting it at the storage level as an atomic write. And this is useful. Uh, a driving use case for this is is within event sourcing. Um, Nats is already fantastic for event source applications. This is sort of one of those missing pieces that, depending on how you represent your commands um, and events. Um, Sometimes a, com a command handler, for instance, needs to produce multiple events, and so you would ideally like those to be atomically written together. And so this is uh, one of the driving motivations for NATS to become even more of a de facto option for replacing existing uh, event source and uh, or event store based solutions. And then finally, um, everybody loves consumers. Streams are super useful, and the consumers today have a little bit of um, heaviness to them in terms of sort of all of the RAF traffic that goes along with them. And so we're figuring out improved ways to, to create effectively light, lighter weight consumers that you can make many, many more of them uh, akin to sort of a standard uh, client subscription, which are, which are very lightweight and you can kind of get in the order of millions of them. So those are some things to look forward to. All right, let's get over to some Sanadia product roadmap. So there's a there's a pretty pretty aggressive um, <clears throat> set of set of things that we want to accomplish this year. Um, this is sort of a subset of them uh, that we're sort of immediately focusing on. One common request that people have had, and and something that we've been seeing consistently pop up, is this desire to have HTTP HTTP based connectivity. And this is this is. Pretty, pretty obvious when, when you say it out loud. I mean, HTTP is the, is the protocol of the web and a lot of providers, a lot of cloud providers and a lot of hosting providers and whatnot support um, HTTP natively. Um, most developers all know HTTP. They might not know the NATS protocol and, and might not be in that ecosystem right out of the gate, but most people know HTTP. So this is really sort of a opportunity for us to bring the, the the power of NATS and um, from a, you know, creating, creating streams and mirrors and geo distribution and cross cloud distribution and whatnot, but supporting an, the HTTP uh, protocol. And so uh, the connectivity layer is basically going to be hosted in Sanity Cloud. It's going to be available as a component within Sanity Platform. Um, if you have to have it as a managed service or uh, de deploying it in your own environment or out to an edge location. And this is going to support basically KV, object store, um, basic pub sub, and, and sort of watcher semantics um, over HTTP. So this one we're, we're all pretty excited about. I think it's going to have a big impact on adoption. Um, so definitely definitely keep, keep your eyes out for that one. Uh, we all really enjoyed Kevin's demo of Nex and another big, big one that's going to be coming that's going to sort of play into the marketplace, um, which is uh, this notion of distributed workloads. And so we focused on connectivity. That's what Nats historically was all about. We introduced persistence with streams, KV and object store. And then now we're kind of getting into the, the compute and the workload type of uh, space. So we have that nice trio of capabilities that are all like Nats native. And Sanadia Cloud is gonna provide the ability to actually run workloads um, on Sanadia Cloud. And we're going to be focused uh, initially within the first quarter of, of Synadia providing these, these services that you can basically include and import within your own account within Synadia Cloud. And so these are differentiated services that might be very useful for a, ver a varying, uh, varying degree of applications. They could be data feeds. 
um, that where you're literally importing a stream or a, a subject um, into your account and then just feeding off that data. And then we're going to be introducing um, a variety of uh, integrations to existing cloud providers. So, you know, how do we bridge a Kafka topic into uh, the NATS ecosystem? How do we bridge um, uh, AWS SNS or SQS into, into NATS and things like that? So there's going to be different integrations there, as well as uh, integrating with a variety of um, data streaming uh, engines. So keep your eyes. We're not announcing anything formally right now, but uh, keep your eyes out for, for these uh, new things coming to the Synaity Cloud. And then the final two are going to be a schema registry, a native schema registry, and we have a, a sort of a nice, unique design for that because of the subtleties of you know subject-based addressing within NATS versus existing solutions like Kafka that is more kind of one-to-one -one between a topic and a and a schema. We have a, a bit more flexibility in the in the NATS world, so we're going to be having some interesting designs around that that are going to be quite powerful. And then a really exciting one is this notion of, uh, we're kind of calling it Orbit, um, and this is going to be a new, uh, new set of client libraries that are, going to, that are going to basically layer on top and be used in conjunction with the standard client libraries uh, for NATS. And these are going to be Synadia provided, they're still going to be open source, but they're going to provide a bunch of net new sort of opinionated capabilities that layer on top the, the core existing clients. And just as a reminder, I think we always sometimes kind of like forget the power of this. That Sinead Cloud and, and Caleb um, earlier in his demo sort of alluded to this, which is Sinead Cloud is based on uh, this underlying NATS deployment, which is called NGS. And this is a multi cloud and multi, multi geo deployment of NATS. And and it's just it's just seamless. You can place assets wherever you want. You can once we introduce the workload capability with Next as the underlying engine, you're going to be able to place workloads wherever across clouds, across geos, and and it's going to have sort of intelligent routing and an intelligent placement of these workloads based on where your your clients actually are um, generating traffic. And all of this is also uh, edge native. So all of these components where they make sense in an edge context are going to be able to be deployed at the edge layer as well.